Hi guys and welcome to this my video on finance applications using geometric sequences and recurrence relations. Now basically, long story short, we're going to take all the learning we've done and we're going to put it all together and look at it, how we apply it to finance. My name is Darren from MathsGuru, thank you very much for joining me. Hopefully you are doing this because you want to, not because you're being made to. If you can though, do me a favour and subscribe on my YouTube channel, it means that I just know that people are actually watching this content. That one little click from you actually means a huge amount to me. And as I say every single time um, I'm on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and all those other places as well hopefully I can see you there now recap of our last lessons as I say we've done a load of work previously on geometric sequences that's when sequences uh, basically get bigger and bigger and bigger through a multiplication so the numbers 2 4 8 16 32 would be a good example of a geometric sequence why because we are timesing by two to go from term to term to term to term to term we are timesing by two now what we decided in previous lessons was actually going term to term to term is great but what if i wanted to get to the 50th term life becomes way too complicated by doing that it just becomes time consuming and even though i can use my calculator yeah i don't necessarily want to uh, there's got to be a quicker way and there was we came up with a, a formula to allow us to do that so what we're really going to do now is effectively use that formula to allow us to uh, apply it to finance and, and real world situations, which we all want maths to be, don't we? Now remember, uh, we can both grow and decay geometrically. And as I've sort of said before, if something goes up slowly and then quicker and quicker and quicker, that is geometric growth. And if it starts pretty, pretty high and then comes down and gets less and less and less and less, but through some sort of a curve, then basically that is geometric decay. And an example of this might well be interest. So when I open a bank account, I'm going to get less, not very much interest. But because the interest starts growing on the interest, what you tend to find is that your money starts to grow quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker the longer you leave it. Okay, now likewise here, it might well be that a car depreciates through a certain percentage each year. Um, and what we tended to find that when things grow, so when things grow, we find a value of R is going to be greater than 1. And when you get to that R value, I'll, come, uh, I'll tell you what I mean by that in a moment. And if it's going to decay, which I really hate that word, then your R value is going to basically fall between 0 and and one. And I've never seen a negative value of R. I wouldn't really know what that would mean. So if you didn't understand any of that or you're missing something, go back and watch the videos on mathsguru.com. All there, sign up for free. Uh, downloadable notes, everything I write on behind me you can use as well. Now let's just recap once again our recurrence relation and occurrence recurrence rule. So here is a relation. If you remember, a relation starts with V0. It has this V of N plus 1 v of n in it and because it's geometric we're going to have an r value there remember we don't have anything after it. we don't have a plus or minus d there we can turn this recurrence relation into a recurrence rule and a recurrence rule always starts with v of n this here should be v0 all right and in this situation that should be r to the floaty n or to the power of n yes and it is always important to make sure you use the uh, questions or the letters they give you in the question i know that when we do SACs for my particular school we change the letters just to see whether people are taking account and unfortunately if they use the wrong letters they actually lose marks and i think that's going to be true in your exam as well radio here we go so recurrence relations and rules the value of r in the following equation is a uh, following equation is really important when it's greater than one the investment will grow or shrink when the value is between zero and one will decay so again i'm just recapping there these notes are for your summary book uh, if you want to print them off and stick them in compound interest okay when we have interest it is always added on doesn't matter if it's a loan or it's an investment compound interest means that we get interest on the interest so for example if i open my account with one thousand dollars at 10 percent interest then what i'm going to do is at the end of the first year i'm going to get 10 percent of a thousand dollars which when we work that out gives me 100 he says we're nearly writing a thousand which gives me 100 dollars okay so that means at the end of the first year i've got a hundred dollars more so therefore at the end of the first year i've got one thousand one hundred dollars now simple interest would just pay me that hundred dollars now for the rest of time and that's ridiculous because i've actually got more money so i want interest 
on that interest, if you would please. So I want that at 10%. I would now want 10% of $1,100, please, which again, if I do that, I do 10% of $1,100 is actually going to give me $110. So I'm going to add that on. So I'm going to have $1,110. Let's try that one again. I'm going to have $1,100 plus $110, which is going to give me $1,210. Notice that actually, simple interest, I'd have only got $1,200. Now I've got an extra $10. Why? Because I've got interest on the interest. I've got 10% on that $100. That makes sense to me. I want that. Now, when that happens, if that was to continue happening, it would start slowly and then it would get faster and faster and faster up in the curve. And so it would be geometric growth. And if you've watched my previous video, you'll know that therefore we can use the value of R equals. Now this value of R is the one in my equation. So when I have, for example, V of N equals R to the power of N times V zero, this is the value of R that could be worked out by my rate of interest divided by 100. And in this situation, it's going to be plus one. The reason it's going to be plus one is because it is growing and numbers greater than one will always grow. So let's have an example of compound interest. The following a recurrence relation can be used to model a compound interest investment at $1,000 paying interest at 8% per annum. Okay, 8% per annum. We've now been given a recurrence relationship. Here we go. So we've got our recurrence relation. Let's just check that the uh, information from the question has been put in there. So we've got a compound interest. We've opened an account of $1,000. There is V0 of $1,000. It's paying interest at 8% per annum. Hold on a moment. Where did I get that 1.08? Aha. Well, if you remember, that's my R value, which is 1 plus R on 100. What's the little value of R? It's my interest rate, which is 8. So 1 plus 8 on 100, which is 1 plus 0 0.08 or 1.08. Now again, it's always good just to know that when they give that value there, that is my rate of interest. That's my R, but it's written as a decimal. Now sometimes we may have to go from this value and backtrack it, but we'll come to that later. In the recurrence relation, VN is the value of the investment after N years. Good to know. Use the recurrence relation to find the value of the investment after one, two, and three years to the nearest cent. Okay, that's important. And being able to round to decimal places, super, super important. So if you remember, V0 is 1,000. Now they want to show that. So we're going to, or, or I'm going to show that. So I've got to show my working out. So, v, so V1 is given by 1.08 times 1,000. I can't do that in my head. Well, I probably could, but I'm not going to. So let's fire up my uh, calculator. Let's do a calculator screen, if you will, please. So 1, 1, 2, 3 times 1.08 gives me $1,080. There we go. So at the end of the first year, V2 is going to be 1.08 times 1080. So now I'm going to do times 1.08 or 1.80, I think I said, but 1.08, which is 1166.4. Now again, your calculator doesn't know we're dealing with money. Money always has two decimal places, which means that would have to be 40 cents. And V3 would be 1.08 times 1166.40. And again, I'm just going to do the times by 1.08. Hit enter and gives me 1259.7. And that 2, we're not going to change the 1, so it stays at 7 months. So there we go. There's the value. Let's put some dollar signs in there because obviously we're dealing with money. And that's that part of the question. Determine when the value of the investment will first exceed $1,500. Well, I can use my calculator and I'm going to do 1,000 and I'm just going to hit enter. That's going to put it into my memory. I'm going to do times. Now your calculator already comes up with ANS 1.08 and there's one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, six years. There we go. So I hit my enter key six times. So therefore it would be after six years. Nice. I love these questions. Let's turn my calculator off. We've got another compound interest example. Bolo, ba, bolo, Sally, you borrow 6,000 from a bank. Interest will accrue or accrue at the rate of 4.2% per annum. So if we look at this question here, we've got a V0 is equal to 6,000. 
What else have we got? We've got a little R is 4.2%. Okay. Let VM be the value of the loan after N compounding period. Write down a recurrent relation to model the values of Sally's loan if interest is compounded yearly. Okay. Now, interest can be compounded in all sorts of different ways. Yes? But the important thing here is to note that actually we have an interest rate given as a percentage per year. Now in that situation, if it's per year, I can use my R is equal to 1 plus 4.2 divided by 100. So when I do that on my calculator, let's fire up my calculator. Uh, I'm going to do 4.2 divided by 100, hit enter, and let's add 1 onto that. That is going to give me 1.042. And you need those every single one of those decimal places. So for yearly, all right, my recurrence relationship is going to be V0 is equal to 6,000. V of M plus 1 equals 1.042. And let's move all this out of the way, give myself some room. And we're going to times that by... V of N. So that's my recurrence relation. They don't want a rule, they want a recurrence relation. So there we go. Now what about this quarterly business? How do I do quarterly? I'll turn my calculator off again. Well, there are four quarters in a year. And believe it or not, all we need to do is take my yearly interest rate and divide it by four. So when we have quarters, I take my yearly interest rate and divide it by 4. So when I do 4.2 divided by 4, I get 1.05. So that becomes 1.05. Now that already looks like my multiplier, doesn't it? Because it's got a 1 in it. No, 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 no. Again, this is still a percentage. All that means is that if I get 4.2% a year, I'm going to get 1.05% per quarter. Now all I've got to do is go back and work out my R value again. And if you remember, that's 1 plus R on 100. Well, this now is my new little R. So therefore, I'm going to write 1 plus 1.05 divided by 100. Fire up my calculator. Uh, 1.05 divided by 100 it gives me... a. Whew, and I'm going to add 1 to that, which gives me, and again, in this situation, 1.0105. You will never, in my view, ever have to round that to decimal places, he says, turning off his calculator. You'll never have to do that to round it to any decimal places. So therefore, answering the question, because it wants a recurrence relationship, V0 is 6,000. V of M plus 1 is equal to my multiplier of 1.0105 times my previous term of V of M. There we go. And what about monthly? Well, how many months are there in a year? Hopefully 12. So let's go back. We know that my yearly interest rate is equal to 4.2%. So if I want my monthly interest rate, I'm going to do 4.2 divided by 12. So let's fire up my calculator again. 4.2 divided by 12 gives me 0 0.35. So there's 0 0.35. Now again, that is still a percentage. So if I want my capital R, I'm going to do 1 plus my little r on 100, which gives me 1 plus 0 0.35 divided by 100, which is going to give me uh, 0 .3, uh, whoops, 0 0.35 divided by 100. And add on 1, if you will, gives me 1 point. 0035. There we go. So that's my capital R. What do I need to do? Answer the question. Write down the, the recurrence relation. All right. So once again, a recurrence relation must start with V0, which is still 6,000. V of M plus 1 becomes equal to my R value, 1.0035 times V of M. And in an exam, generally, that is worth two marks. Now, as a heads up, that stuff there, being able to get interest rates yearly, quarterly, monthly, and even daily, becomes massively important throughout the rest of this course and year 12. But also, being able to go from these values here and backtrack it 
to get this little value of r here. I'm not going to do that at this moment in time, but it's going to become important. Reducing balanced depreciation. We've said before in a previous video, what does reducing flat rate, uh, re uh, what is it, flat rate depreciation? Flat rate depreciation is where it goes down by the same amount each month. Reducing a balance depreciation is where it goes down by a certain percentage each month. Now, because it is depreciation, you'll notice that my R formula now becomes 1 minus R on 100. So it's minus because depreciation means it's going down. The rest of my formula for my recurrence relation stays exactly the same. So we don't have to get too excited about that. We just now change it to a minus sign. So let's, we can go on to an example because this is the same theory as we've had before. We're just going to have a, a minus sign now. A car is purchased for $18,500. ka -ching! The following recurrence relation can be used to model the car's value as it depreciates by 10% each year. So let's see. That there, they've given me my value of little r. That's 10%. So my capital R is now 1 minus 10 on 100. That becomes 1 minus 0 0.1, which becomes 0 0.9. Have they got that in my recurrence relationship? They absolutely do. There we go. So, And again, if I see a 0 0.9 value, I know that it's just been reduced by 10%. If I see 0 0.8, I know it's been reduced by 20%. Oh, these things start to percolate through my brain. In the recurrence relation, V of N is the value of the car after N years. Use the recurrence relation to find the value of the car after 1, 2, and 3 years. I think we can do that now because we're just going to follow what we did before and use my calculator. So V0 is equal to 18,500. V1 is going to be 0 0.9 times 18,500. Now again, if you're wondering why I'm doing all the working out, in your VCAR exam, you'll be absolutely expected to do that. If you don't, sadly, you'll lose a lot of marks. 18,500 times by 0 0.9 gives me a grand total of 1,6. 650. There we go. That's the first year. What do I do now? Again, 0 0.9 times my previous venue, which was 16650. So nice and easy on my calculator. I just hit times now, 0 0.9. It's going to take that previous answer, and that's going to give me, he says, writing in the razor, 14985. And V3 is going to be 0 0.9 times 1498. Eight, five. Again, just times that on my calculator by 0 0.9. Hit enter. It gives me 13486.5. Do I leave it as 0.5? No, please don't because, yes, money is always to two decimal places. So that would have to be to 0 0.50. The world goes crazy. Lovely. Thank you very much. When will the value of the car first be worth less than $10,000? Well, let's just go back to basics. We'll do 18,500, hit enter. I'm going to times that by 0 0.9. Oops, he says 0 0.9, if you will. And I'm going to get, so let's just check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 years. All I've done is put my recurrence relation to my calculator and hit enter 6 times. So therefore, in that situation, it's going to be 6 years because that's when it's first going to fall below $10,000. And there we go. That's the end of this video. Hopefully it has been useful. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you can. Follow me on TikTok and all that type of stuff. Um, there are other videos uh, coming in this series. Not too many. We're almost finished, actually. Um, hopefully I'll see you in one of those. If not, please take care and stay safe.